Okay, so I have my new um, Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2 mounted on my uh, Orion XX12i. Um, this is the Orion dual speed focuser. Um, so what I've done is I've made a slight adaptation to the uh, bracket. I had to take some of the um, take some of the metal off of this edge so that it would clear um, the mounting plate for the focuser. So right now I've got, you can see I've got the focus controller here. Um, you can also hook this up to things like uh, Sharp Cap or Fire Capture that, and it'll, um, uh, those programs can provide continuous feedback uh, to the focuser to keep the image um, in focus automatically um, while you're imaging. So I'm really excited to use this for that purpose, um, specifically for planetary imaging, and then later on uh, trying my hand at some DSO. So right now um, what I've done is I've put the focuser all the way in, um, and I've zeroed out the motor, um, the position on the controller software. And so what now what I'm gonna do is actually set this to the highest range. So what I did is I actually uh, set the travel um, of the focuser tube all the way out. And then I took note of what position it was at. And for me, it was at position, for this, for this uh, particular stepper motor that is inside of the um, Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2, um, that's 30,650 roughly. Um, so now what I do is just hit go and we can see that the focuser is automatically coming out. So it's, um, it's set at, um, a default speed of, I think it's 400 steps per second or something. I'm not exactly sure what that, that, uh, setting is in, but the, the, the software has two settings. It has a setting for, um, Oh, I didn't set my max here. What I want to do is actually set my maximum to 3,000, oops, what the heck? Oh, numlock would help. 3,650, oh, that's not doing it either. 3,650, yes. And I want to limit the position. So my minimum is zero and maximum is 3,650. Um, the uh, motor speed is set to 400. If you mouse over it real quick, it says every step of motor has a limit of max steps per second can achieve, it can achieve. Uh, if you exceed that limit, your motor will quickly jump, quickly jump steps and it won't operate correctly. Consult the motor manufacturer before increasing the max speed value. Uh, this suggests set to 200 steps for the, um, this is default speed for the Pegasus motor. Now it came out of the box set to 400, but I can simply just come in here and set that to 200 and supposedly that's more accurate. Um, there's a bunch of other settings here. You can set some presets. So you can just jump right to some preset settings, which is pretty cool. So I hit OK, and now I can see that I've hit the max, the 3,650 that I tried to set it to. Um, it is wound up at that position, so now the focuser is completely extended um, to the end of its travel. So I think that's the end of its travel. I might, it might have a little bit more. But one drawback is that because it's a stepper motor and because it's holding the position of that motor very, very strongly, um, I no longer have um, manual control with the focuser knob. At least not without risking ruining the motor, I believe. Um, there, there's a lot of tension on everything. So like there's a coupler in there that hooks up the shaft of the uh, motor to the shaft of my focuser. Um, I removed the focuser knob from this side and um, actually shaved down the, um, uh, the, the rod that runs from this side all the way through the focuser. I shaved it. I, I actually took a grinder and ground off about, I don't know, maybe quarter inch, a little bit more, something like that. Just so I'd have enough room for uh, for the uh, rod from the motor to hook up. So it's powered from a 12 volt power source. Um, it came with a 12 volt car adapter. Um, I've got a little 12 volt battery pack with uh, eight D batteries in here. Oops, focus that. There's eight D batteries in here that make up the 12 volts. And so this came with. This is for the cooling fan for the for the uh, telescope, but. Um, the plug was uh, center positive, which you can see right here. The, the, the it's supposed to be center positive going in there, so I checked that out. Um, this network port right there is only designed for the hand, the optional hand controller. Um, you're not supposed to hook this up to a network port on a computer at all. Um, it says that very explicitly in the instructions and on the product website. Um, it hooks up with USB. Um, the USB does not power it. It is powered by this 12 volts. So. I actually have a 12 volt lead acid battery that I use when I'm actually out in the field for stuff like this. Um, so yeah, pretty slick, you know. Um, one of the other th cool things too is you can kind of just go by steps 
If I try to go over my max, it'll tell me uh, the maximum that exceeds the limit. So maximum position set 30,650. So, but if I want to go backwards, I can do 250 steps at a time. And you can see as I click that, it's going to adjust the actual position. I can also set it directly to a position if I want to. So let's just go like uh, 15,000. Whoops. 15,000, which is roughly half of the focus length. As you can see, it's giving me an output of the exact step that it's on as it's going. And also the go button kind of gives you a progress meter of how far along it is, um, how far along it's made it to the, the setting that you that you desire. So here it is, spinning away. Pretty cool. I'm very excited to use this. Um, one of the biggest challenges I've had when imaging is just the fact that I have to touch the telescope to focus, and um, it gets to be really, um, you know, anytime you touch the tel tel telescope, it's just, it bounces all over the place. So I'm trying to manually track the image and then also trying to focus at the same time, and it's just awful. I, I, I spend so much time focusing um, and tracking that I don't get enough time for actual imaging. So... With the combination of this and the equatorial platform that I'm building, which I don't have anything to show in this video for that, um, the cool thing will be that um, I'll be able to take 20 to maybe, you know, 10, 20,000 frames um, in a single shot without having to touch the telescope at all. I'll be able to, um, rely, uh, I'll be able to rely on the capture software to actually um, provide feedback to the motor um, to get the focus, um, to basically keep it continually in focus. Um, based on the, the, the readings from within um, the capture software. Or I could just leave it static, you know, get it dialed in and leave it where it is. Um, and then uh, with the equatorial platform, I'll be able to have the telescope much more stable than I've ever had it before. Um, able to focus on an object like, you know, Jupiter or Saturn and not need to, uh, not need to manually move the telescope. So I should be able to capture some pretty amazing images with this. Um, and I'm very excited for my next Dark Knight. And I'm very excited to get the equatorial, equatorial platform finished as well, which I also have lots of parts for and am in the middle of uh, fabricating. So, uh, for example, this is one of the aluminum sections um, that will carry the, the arc of the platform as it rocks back and forth very, very slowly to counteract the um, apparent motion of the sky. So... Anyway, that's the wrap up on how this went, how this uh, motor mounted on my, um, my Orion XX12i.